everybody. Welcome to the Women in Business Show. I am your host, Maria Fraze. And I just want to say a really quick thank you to our sponsor, Purinata. Make sure that you go check them out online at www.purinata.ca. And you can do your curbside pickup and your online ordering. And they also do deliveries in the local community. So make sure you check them out. And uh, I will tell you, my number one favorite thing is the bath bombs. So make sure you check that out as well. Uh, today I've got with me a wonderful guest. Her name is Lorena Mitchell from Evolve Green. How are you doing today, Lorena? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, Maria. Oh, absolutely. Anytime. So this is very exciting. Lorena, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, let's go from there. Sure. Well, I'm uh, the owner and president of Evolve Green. Uh, I've been doing this for 12 years now. And before that, I worked for the Royal Canadian Mint as a lead hand in the plating facility. Um, when I was younger, I did own and operate a, uh, uh, a cleaning service. I had three crews on the road, so and I was doing environmental products back then as well. So I've always been oh. uh, really into the environment, really into green. Yeah. Um, but for a time, I went and I worked for the government, <laughs> for the Royal right. Canadian Mint. Uh, and then I came back to be an entrepreneur again. So, Okay, that's awesome. So you said you've been in this business for 12 years. Yes. Yeah. I can imagine that it's evolved quite a bit since you first started. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, when we started, nobody really knew anything about renewable energy systems. In fact, they didn't even know what the word was. One of the most common questions was, what does the word renewable energy actually mean? Right. And so we spent a lot of time explaining the basics of what that meant, because I never said I was a solar company okay. or a wind company or whatever. I, right. I was never, I was non-specific for a reason because we do multiple technologies mm -hmm. and renewables work best together really. So, right. um, you know, if you're going to be putting solar on your house, we recommend you upgrade your insulation. We recommend you, uh, you know, make everything in energy efficient, get LED lighting, um, all the things that you can do before you put a solar system in, because that's just going to make everything work that much better. So it really does work together as the whole kind of, you know, the whole thing comes together to give you that kind of a, a the best result, really. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That, that does make sense to put it all together kind of thing beforehand so that you're not only just saving the money, you're actually making a huge difference in your entire home, right? That, that's absolutely correct. Yeah. yeah. So uh, to reduce the overall energy footprint of your home. Mm -hmm. uh, so we really work uh, together well with uh, other companies that do lots of other things like uh, changing the windows and putting in insulation and other programs. But what I do is I go in and I look at what can we do for you. So mm -hmm. a little bit like an energy audit, right? Oh, yeah. So, and then I tell you what's feasible. Like, what does it look like? I want you to get the best return for your money that you possibly can. I, I have lots of people that come in and say, just let's throw the solar at it no matter what. And I'll change and do everything electrical and I'll just we'll just push more solar at it. But you know what? That's really expensive to do it that way. Okay. So what, what we really want to see is an energy plan um, and so that we can mitigate your carbon footprint for your home and you have a plan moving forward. So it's not just about today and what I can do for you right now, right. but it's also a little bit about what, what can we do for you in the future? Like, are you adding, planning on adding storage? And storage is batteries of some description, yeah. right? Um, so, you know, when I add those storage systems, what is our achievement? What do we want? What's the goal there? Well, a lot of people talk about wanting to have an electric car down the road. Okay. Well, when we're looking at electric cars, they actually have these chargers that are like 40 amp uh, chargers and they're, okay. they're really fast push chargers. Mm -hmm. If you get in the old neighborhood of, of like, let's say, um, Wellington Crescent area or anything like that, if, you, if you're down in Winnipeg, uh, in those areas, they actually couldn't push that kind of energy on really? top of what people are doing. So by adding the solar system and a battery backup, we can actually uh, put in place the system that can support a 40 amp charger down the That's road for that cool. electric vehicle so yeah. that it takes the pressure off uh, Manitoba Hydro. So yeah. we work with Manitoba Hydro on creating microgrids. Um, okay. 
let me talk about a microgrid and yeah. what that is. Tell me about that. So how how we do uh, a microgrid is simply not every house has solar. Let's say we're going into a congested neighborhood, okay? Yeah. They need X amount of power to service this neighborhood. And also you'll see that there's pushes on to get electric furnaces and, you know, that's going to draw more energy off right. the lines for hydro. Mm -hmm. And you've got a lot of aged infrastructure in some of those areas. Right, definitely. And they can't support sending that much more energy without doing a huge upgrade and costing oh. hydro money. Okay. So in their net benefit to have every second or third house have a small solar system, yeah. which helps mitigate... Good the energy required. And because people tend to, ch to plug in these smart chargers mm -hmm. overnight, if we do a back-end battery storage system that's just ready to do that push for the car, it still takes the pressure off hydro. So mm -hmm. either direction that you look at it, we can implement these smart storage systems and mm -hmm. they're there for you if the power goes out too. Yes. It won't we won't do it for running an electric furnace, but a gas furnace actually it, it can it can run the fans. That's no problem. It provides the two forty volt energy they need. Um, in fact, right. it's more stable than the grid. Um, so for your electric appliances and stuff, we have mm -hmm. some people that put our inverter systems on specific things that they've had trouble in brownout areas, like Oak Bank is a brownout area. Mm -hmm. Um, where certain appliances and things don't run well on the hydro because if the voltage is is going up and down too much in that area, that's the okay. brownout. Okay. So they can see it drop out to uh, 210 and go all the way up to 280 volts, which is a lot for those new dishwashers oh. and right. uh, pellet stoves, the augers. Yes. Uh, and uh, other equipment like that. So the new washing machines. Why do they burn out so fast? Because they're all electronic, and they can't they can't handle the unstable voltage all the time. So in some areas, you'll oh. notice their appliances are blowing continually, and this is why. So um, you know, and that's why you see appliances only have a year warranty. Gosh, can you imagine? Nobody no. reads the fine print. You buy a new no. fridge and it's got a year warranty. No, I know, worries. right? Because of yeah. that, I would have never thought that at all. Sure. Because sure. they know that this stuff doesn't last with this kind of a voltage uh, going up right. and down and that it's really dependent on the grid that it's installed into. Okay. So some of our right. clients actually have a sub panel with those certain electronics yes. that are only running on that. Um, you know, so that's uh, that is uh, another reason why you would do a back end battery storage system. Right. Uh, to keep things a little bit more stable. And they would definitely, and it would help your appliances to last longer and everything else as well. So in the future yeah. of your home and stuff like that, it's actually a great investment. Absolutely, because our yeah. inverter systems will actually keep that voltage within a much tighter framework. So you're going to be, uh, you know, that 230 to, you know, 245, and it's not really going to deviate all that much. It's going to stay within the 10. Yes, so, which, is, which yeah. is really wonderful. Yeah, that so is. we do a lot of work in that. And I mean, okay. I won't say, we also do off-grid, strictly off-grid, like cabins and off-grid homes and stuff like that. Okay. And we're seeing a lot more people do that because of the increase uh, in, in cost uh, for hydro uh, and the instability in Manitoba, right? So a lot of people are worried that uh, Manitoba Hydro will sell. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, the, that the province will sell it off or in whole and they've already started in pieces. Right. Yeah. So a lot of people just really are, are frustrated and worried about their grid. So mm -hmm. we do have a number of families that are just going off grid uh, completely and we can show them um, what the best way would be for them to do it because it's very specific okay. um, to the individual. Is it also specific kind of to the area that you live in? Is that also a specific? It can, it can be, yeah, because it can vote to the different kinds of fuel sources. So if you oh, live okay. in the prairies, then you might want to get like a boiler that can do um, bales versus oh. logs or something like that. If you were doing a wood boiler, right. uh, it might make more sense for you to go propane. And a lot of people don't realize um, they think, uh, oh, well, fridges and propane are expensive, and that's true, mm -hmm. and they need yeah. servicing and stuff like that. But to be fair, the propane version in a stove, uh, the stove oven combination, yeah. and the dryer and the hot water tank is all just a gas 
version. There's a conversion kit. So oh. it's really easy and there's nothing major. And mm -hmm. including the same as the gas furnace, you can switch to a propane furnace. So if you want to get off of hydro and deal with a different company, I mean, you can go to Superior Propane or any of those. Um, they don't, you don't have to buy the big storage tanks. Actually, it's a, le a yearly lease. Really? Uh, and then you okay. fill it up. You fill yeah. it up once a year, usually in, um, you know, anywhere from spring to fall. You don't want them out in the winter. Fill it up once. And that does a 1,200 square foot house, those big uh, tanks that they put in. Wow. Uh, and that you can do your heating. Um, so for a thousand bucks for a 1,200 square foot, you're doing your heating, your hot water, uh, your stove, and your dryer. And then everything else is a small solar system. Really? Why? Because the rest of it's not that hard to run, uh, really? you know, with a solar system. So then you're looking at maybe $20,000 or so. Those are like the heavy appliances you would put on something like that. And then you can do a, a lighter solar system for that part, for the rest of it. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. And then, That's of course, cool. you have your battery backup. And then we have some yeah. uh, battery backups that are just smaller and people want to mm -hmm. run certain things. And like there's some pump and, you know, the fridge, freezer, a few lights, communications, okay. those types of things. And a CPAP. That's very common these days right. now, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so we do smaller battery backups, and we also have access to carbon fiber batteries now, Ooh, which is uh, carbon carbon on the neutral plate of a battery. Um, at 30% depth of discharge, they can have up to 9,000 cycles. And this is uh, versus like a flood acid battery, you're in the range of maybe 3,000 cycles. That's a huge um, difference. It's a massive That's difference. Huge. It is, yeah. it is. Um, because we're not really a big fan of lithium here at Evolve Green because in Manitoba, the lithium batteries, if they're discharged or charged at the wrong temperature, at the, okay. at the really cold, cold temperatures that we yeah. use them, they're really actually quite dangerous and can go off like a bomb. Really? Yeah, I that's, no idea that they're that not allowed to be in planes for that reason, right? So, um, oh. because of pressure okay. and temperature. Yeah. Um, so it's really important, uh, you oh. know, to to have the right technology for the right area. So yeah. lithium is really great in Texas where it's yeah. warm most of the yeah. time and they will never reach temperatures that are dangerous. Yeah. But it's super important, um, you know, that uh, you get the right technology for the right thing. So we are switching yeah. to our carbon batteries right now. Right. Uh, Right now, we're also working on research and development. Uh, we're doing solar heaters, which go on the backs of solar panels to okay. on some of our installations. It's only maybe a 212 pitch or a 312 pitch. Okay. Um, so we don't have very many degrees, which is great yeah. for production in June, but it holds the snow in the winter time. Oh. And some yeah. of our clients don't want to be getting on that roof in the winter. So. Yeah. So what we do uh, and what we're working on is solar heaters. And what these are is it's timed like with a hot tub timer okay. and, and by thermostat. So oh. uh, the thermostat controls how much ramp up to the heaters. And so we're using carbon heaters, yeah. carbon fiber heaters. Again, you hear that word where you're going to start seeing carbon fiber in a lot of industries that need to conduct heat or electricity. Okay. So you're going to even see, and they'll call it graphene when you get into the solar industry, but, oh, I said, you know, sorry. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. So you'll, they'll call it graphene okay. um, when it comes into the solar side of things. Yeah. Um, or paintable conductive ink. Okay. You may have heard. So there's what other. Conductive ink. Yeah. So what they're talking yeah. about is being able to paint your building and have okay. a conductive energy. Hey, that's really cool. Yeah, that's yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, so totally. one day you're just gonna have built in. You put your siding on and your yeah. windows on, and everything conducts energy back to your wow. storage, and you're gonna become just a storage capsule. Yeah. And you'll be able to charge your car. Really this is where we're. This cool. is where we're moving, and we're moving really yeah. fast. Um, so this is like, uh, you know, a lot of the things that we're trying to do um, and keep on top of as we move through, uh, well, even right now, like, it's just amazing the advances even in the last year. Right. Carbon batteries have been around for about five years now. Okay. Um, and 
they hit the industry, they were really expensive. Now the prices right. are starting to come down and it's becoming more realistic. Right. But what's also cool about carbon batteries, mm -hmm. you can deplete them like lithium up to 90% without okay. destroying this battery. Really? Our equipment won't let you go past 50 because we yes. want to keep you in the good it's range sure. and yes. get more okay. cycle life out of this totally. battery. But even at 50% depth of discharge, we're looking at 4,500 cycles, right. which is wow. which is phenomenal, right? Uh, again, the 2,400 or something of a flat asset battery. So we're we're really quite exactly. pleased uh, the rollout has happened, and um, we have managed to get people coming away from the flat asset batteries, okay. especially in this in the circumstances where you know they're more in danger. Like this thing is going to be out of the cabin. People don't go there all the time. Right. Their batteries yeah. could freeze. They're not, uh, you know, in a temperate area. Um, you know that kind of thing. So then we, okay. you know, we have clients switching over to AGM, which is great. It's a sealed battery. It only loses two okay. percent a month. But the carbon batteries even better when it comes to temperature compensation and everything. So you actually don't. Um, you have more capacity in cold temperatures. Okay. Its working temperature span is bigger than most it's AGMs. Better acid batteries so right. it's going that's to be great. something that's amazing for cabins and be. remote areas especially in this part of manitoba where we you know we are we are prone to freezing temperatures so excellent lorena we'll just take a quick commercial break guys when we come back we're going to talk to lorena a little bit more about how being a woman in this business is very different than being a man in this business so let's talk about that when we come back solar. It's not just for the environment, although that is a great reason. Did you know that when you install your new solar plant, you are only paying seven cents per kilowatt? That's right, seven cents. Solar is now cheaper than buying electricity, 25% cheaper than buying it from Manitoba Hydro. Going solar is different from any other investment you will make in your life, as you will retain the value on your roof. Solar does not depreciate like other investments do. And unlike a GIC, your investment will start paying you from day one. And when you choose to sell your home, well, you will get the cost of the solar back as this investment rarely depreciates. When choosing solar, look for high-end products like microinverters with 10 to 25 year warranties. Make sure your installation is done by a professional. We are Evolve Green and we are celebrating 12 years in the industry and can help you put your roof to work for you. Ask also about your options like battery backup for when the grid fails and how about solar heaters to get rid of snow buildup. Are you a farm or a business? Did you know that your solar is a 100% tax write-off? Yes, that's right. You can write off all the cost for the solar in the year you purchased it. This is a perfect investment for any business. In Manitoba, the portion a resident customer sells to Hydro is also a tax write-off in the first year. Farms pay no PST on solar systems. We build, design, and supply the best in solar power for both on and off the grid. For experts you can trust, call or email Evolve Green today. 1-866-5-EVOLVE or support at evolvegreen.ca. Wonderful, Lorena. Welcome back. Okay. 
So we are unfrozen. There we go. Okay, excellent. Welcome back, Lorena. I am really excited to talk to you about what um, what it means to be a woman in this business. What does that mean to you versus, you know, I mean, is it mostly a man run business? It is fairly male dominated. However, okay. today is really, it's different. We're seeing yeah. a lot more ladies in our industry, which is really great to see. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing less pushback uh, uh, if you are a female in the industry uh, than there used to be. But literally, there was a time when, uh, you know, I would be at a trade show or, or something like that and with my husband because he liked to come with me to a lot of that stuff, uh, yeah. you know, and they'd walk up to him. They would never ask me, uh, you know, whatever it was they wanted to know about uh, renewable energy. And he just like, I, uh, <laughs> I'm, yeah, my husband is smart guy, but he's yeah. a nurse actually. So, okay. Excellent. um, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't, uh, you know, he would, if you've got a health question. <laughs> then that's where you go, right? Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Okay. We both have our specialties. Okay. Um, totally. But, you know, and I, and I used to have uh, a lot of people just say, you know, why do you think you can be, me you know, chemical, mechanical, or whatever? Yes. And I had the same pushback at the Mint, to be fair, um, yes. because that was another blue-collar industry. Um, yeah. I was the first lady lead hand to actually work out at the time. Wow, that's uh, awesome. beyond a year. Wow. Yeah, I, ha I held the position for actually eight of the years that I was at Mint. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, and when I left, not too long after, there was another lady lead hand that okay. came in uh, because it's all by competition, right? So it's right. not like it's you're not picked or whatever. You've got to mm -hmm. go through a full competition to win it. You've got to want it. You've got to work for it. You know? Really, I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, cool. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm used to it. Uh, yeah. I'm used to having pushback uh, because right. I'm a female. Right. Um, you know, which it really frustrates me um, to, to a large degree in, uh, you know, you work, you work 150% harder in some cases yeah. to be recognized at 50% of your value. Wow. Um, you know, and it, it really is quite a large difference. I, mm -hmm. I know, like, even in my past employment, uh, you know, it was the same deal. It really was. Uh, until they knew who I was and what I was about, um, they, uh, a new manager coming on or any of those things, I was automatically 50% of the value, face value of another lead hand that was male. Wow. Um, yeah, and I, and I do hope that all of that has changed today, and it yeah. probably has. That's a For lot sure. of years ago mm -hmm. already. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I I really, I was always the type of person, I was never a follower. Okay. Always a leader. Okay. Yeah. And, and and I can't say that it it didn't hurt and it wasn't hard. I mean, I was, well, how old would I would have been? I, I must have been in my early 30s, right? So okay. in my early 30s. Yeah. I was still trying to figure out some stuff, right? So, yeah, sure. and I didn't understand, you know, if you if you're mean to somebody or you're an ass to somebody or something yeah. like that, and and they're and they're just rating your, you know, and they don't like you, yeah, then you can understand. That's right. You know, you mm -hmm. you can understand these things, but I didn't understand why there was a lot of people when I won competitions and when I did these things and I, and the same with the solar or the mm -hmm. renewable energy industry, I didn't understand, but there was people who actually didn't like me for just me being me. Because you were, yeah, a woman. Because I dared to be different. Yeah. I dared to be me and I dared to be mm -hmm. different. And I wouldn't yeah. say I'm a feminist by any stretch, yeah. believe it mm -hmm. or not. And I've met other ladies like me. We don't mind being ladies. We like who right. we are, we don't have. Totally any concept of being anything else or anything like yeah. that and i have six children right well, we're going to talk about that in a second here too <laughs> and a loving sure. and a loving husband but you yeah. know i i don't i i hear honestly mm -hmm. um you know i didn't i i don't understand to me when i'm out in the workforce i don't look at somebody as a man or a woman or anything right. else i I, I just expect that they know what they're doing and we're going to work together or whatever on whatever project yeah. we're doing. So to me, it's not even a, it's like I'm, I'm gender neutral when I go out and work. Yeah. 
I'm only female really when I come home. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? but it is, it's a blue collar industry, which is normally yes. taken over by men, right? So yeah. it's hard to make your presence known yeah. in that kind of an industry and make sure people know that you know what you're talking about. You're educated in that. You're smart in that thing. And yeah. you know you've got the creative ideas and all that kind of stuff too. And so that is huge when it comes to uh, when it comes Absolutely. to that. Absolutely. And of course, I, I did have actually something in my pocket that um, yeah. they didn't. The reason why they couldn't learn and retain the same as I did is I have a, I have a video memory. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I am oh functionally, I'm functionally dyslexic. Okay. So I learned as a child uh, to remember things, and yeah. I have. Um, I, I'm not as good as I used to be, uh, okay. but I am 51. Okay, give me okay. a break, aging, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, I think gracefully. But he, he you know, yeah. what's happening though is um, all the way through. They would not understand why was I 90%, why was I 100% on all right. these tests, like for any mm -hmm. competition I was doing, how yeah. could this be, how could this be, right? right. Um, I remember on an operator competition, I was the top one out of 80 people who right. applied for the job. Mm -hmm. And it came down to all of the written stuff and all of the retained stuff. And wow. you know, and it's because mm -hmm. everything I see, I can just sit there close my eyes for a second act and, and I see the information again and it's literally like a videotape running and oh, don't do that right uh, okay. it's, 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 it's like a videotape rolling again I actually yeah. hear the voice of the person who told me the information or if I read it I'm seeing the book in my head uh, okay. it's real time so it does take a little bit of time to access mm -hmm. um, and then I would have these kind of like I always scribbled notes yeah. Um, I'm a note scribbler and it's never about me rereading those okay. notes. Nope. It's about writing it down. It is about mm -hmm. writing it down yes. and then teaching it. Mm -hmm. So you learn it, you scribble it out, yep. and then you teach it. And you actually, you as a normal memory person will retain 70%. In right. my case, I would retain 100%. Wowzers, that's really that's cool. That's why I was a force. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so don't put me in a competition where I've had an opportunity to learn because to learn. Yes. I will I will blow you out. <laughs> that yeah. is fantastic. I love yeah. that. It is but a I am, trick up the sleeve, right? But, but it's a spelling test, however, I am dyslexic. <laughs> so that would be a little different, right? Exactly. But yeah, well, it's just, you know, cool. the, you know, backwards letters and yeah. Yeah, no kidding. That is really neat. So how about when you had kids, you were raising kids while you were growing this business. I mean, yeah. for the last 12 years you've been doing this. Tell me a little bit about how, what that looked like for you. Yeah, well, especially when I was, uh, you know, just before I went into business for myself, it was a bit stressful. I mean, I had, I had babies at home. I was, uh, when I worked mm -hmm. at Dement, for instance, I was 12 hour shifts rotational. Yeah. Um, so I'd literally come home, sleep an hour to get kids up, for school, make lunches, and then I'd sleep for another couple hours with my mother over, and by noon, as soon as anybody heard me twitch in the house, yes. the dogs would also let them know I twitched. <laughs> anyway, everybody yeah. would scatter for the door. I'm telling okay. you, that was it. Mm -hmm. After about noon, I was on my own. So then yeah. it would be like whether or not that child, the ones that were still home, yes. you know, got sleep or something. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, so this isn't just about ladies in business. This is about mm -hmm. ladies also in shift work and everything else. Yeah. Like Gloria, mm -hmm. I also have myasthenia gravis. So what that is is it's a neuro, um, this uh, neurotransmitters. As you get tired, they need to replenish at a okay. normal rate to get the signals to your muscles to move. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, anyways. The, those little fibers stop reproducing at the same rate when you're tired. And as you become more tired, the signals don't jump across the plates. Okay. So then your muscles get weaker and weaker. Um, so I would yeah. also have where my myasthenia would start to act up and now I'm becoming yeah. weak. And I right. still have that 12 hour shift. And while I was starting the business, I had the business and the 12 hour shift uh, yeah. to deal with, right? right. Um, and then yeah. yet, on top of that, you're being a wife and a mother. So you're yes. doing all of the things, you're doing the work, yeah. you're, you know, putting in all the time and effort for your own business, which is never easy to start up. And That's then you've right. got all the other things on the side as well. Yeah, That's absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I really feel for the mothers out there. I, yeah. 
all of them work so hard. You know, even if you're just working, uh, let's say you're working a fast food place eight hours yeah. a day or whatever. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine working around fast food? Let's say you're cooking burgers yeah. all day long or something. You come home and now you've got to make dinner, you know, exactly. nurse your child, um, bath them, do laundry. Right. You got, you know, your husband and... Uh, just to be fair, it can be like having another child, eh? mm -hmm. ladies. We know <laughs> this, right? Yes. Yes. Yes, 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 definitely. And they have their needs too. Yeah. So you know, yeah. uh, you know, like yeah. So I really feel that uh, women are out there in the workforce in general, mm -hmm. not just business women. That's right. Are really in that position where they're superheroes and they can't always do it, you know, or do it well. Oh. I like to say I'm, I'm, you know, multitasking, but I'm not always doing it well. <laughs> right, I know, and that's exactly right. I have learned a long time ago that I can do multitasking. I can definitely do that, but I am more creative and more focused when I'm just on one project. But we have no option sometimes. We have yeah. no option but to do that. To wear our no. many, many hats. No, no, no. I mean, I can remember tons of times where I was doing, you know, more than four things at the same time, yes. achieving none of them really well, of course, right. but, mm -hmm. you know, still having to be in that position where you just have to continue exactly. um, and do the best you can. And I think that's what I, my message to other mothers in yeah. business or in full-time work with children, or even, you know, you got a lot of the sandwich gem generation. So you've got a lot of 40-year-old gals, 50-year-old gals like myself mm -hmm. out there working full time and now they're looking after their parents at home too. That's true. That is um, very true. Yeah. You know, so it's not mm -hmm. even as children, it's can be, you know, looking after um, the parents um, now with the sandwich generation, you know, and you don't want them to go into the nursing home nowadays. Holy smokes, exactly. right? That's Pretty right. Scary. Yeah. Um, you know, so there's a lot more to consider and I, I know personally, mm -hmm. like I, I shop for my mom and stepdad. Mm -hmm. as well yes. uh, as look after my family here. So I'm also a member of that sandwich generation trying to right. keep them in their own home. Yes. Um, so, you know, so I appreciate that. And I think, you know, it's something valuable to be said that ladies, I think we are born with a lot of patience. Yes. Um, we are born courageous because mm -hmm. we have to be mothers. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I think when you sink that kind of energy into a business, I think you get some pretty significant and great results. I agree. Um, and I've certainly been watching some of the new world leaders that are mm -hmm. ladies, and I think they're doing a fantastic mm -hmm. job. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, you know, you're seeing more and more matriarchs out there, and that's exactly what they are, and the description of a matriarch at heart, isn't it? So that's yes. just basically a female leader, a right. little superhero running around. Little and I think every hero. family every family has one of those, right? Right, exactly. Absolutely. So what would you say your number one tip for a woman? If, if let's say, a mom wants to get into a certain type of business, what would your number one tip be for her? Do something you're passionate about first. Figure that out. Because yeah. you know what? You need something that can drive you to work. Uh, if, yeah. if it doesn't do that for you, you're never going to get through the tough times. Right. Um, it's not something oh, that so you're going to be able to stick to yeah. um, because you need something that can pull you through the dark times because, yeah. I mean, it's lovely to make the business plan and it goes like this, right? That's not I'd, love to have, I'd love to have a business <laughs> plan like that too. Right? I, I just yeah. can't with a, a straight face mm -hmm. do it. <laughs> anymore no. the banks mm -hmm. look at me like oh we always see ones that look like this and i said you want me to make it like that because like i've been in business for 12 years it's never looked right. like that to me it's, it's like this like exactly you know and yes. you're gonna and, and you're starting to see that in their ask yeah so in their ask they're asking you for what could go wrong mm -hmm. you know yes exactly. what do you foresee and they're actually trying to see you as an individual do you have the fortune teller skills to know right. what could go wrong with your company? Right. You know, I mean, I'm not sure anybody cited pandemic. Right. No, I don't think anybody did. I don't think anybody did at all. So, but yeah. So, I mean, in that case, you need to have a passion to push through it. You absolutely yeah. have to have the passion yes. first. First and foremost, yeah. you know, and I see a lot of people doing that. stuff just yeah. because it's the only opportunity sitting there. That's right. never a good reason to do something. Right, exactly. If you have something you're passionate about, can, you can and you do can that. do and you can do two things. Like you can yeah. go make sandwiches at Subway until you figure it out, or while you're starting up into something else. Exactly. 
That's when right. things were slow, you would see me pumping gas. Well, I don't I don't have mm -hmm. any high horse to get off of here. Nope. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've exactly. done, you know, two to three million in sales a year yeah. up to. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've done well right. as a, and I'm the only owner at this company. Yeah. Um, so, but I mean, like, but that didn't mean at times I didn't need to, you know, do something else mm -hmm. in order to put food on the table for my kids. That's and I right. think that's the, one of the things that you'll notice about ladies. They don't have any druthers about doing that. No, nope, they need right. to pull up yeah. and go start cleaning a house down the road because they don't have 50 mm -hmm. bucks they need for their kids. And you're going to find the ladies are more apt to do something like that. Right. Um, you know, exactly. just to, just to pull it in. And I've certainly had to mm -hmm. a lot in my life, uh, over the years, right. As things yeah. go up and down like that. And that's your contingency plan. It's just like work harder. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Work harder, but do something you're passionate about as well so that it drives you. I love that. Absolutely. I love that. Lorena, Absolutely. where can people find you? Where can they get a hold of you? Well, definitely check out our website at www.evolvegreen.ca. Perfect. And you can contact us off there at, at uh, contact at evolvegreen.ca. Perfect. Um, and it's one eight six six five evolve if you're giving us a shout. Yes. Um, on Facebook though, it is called The Evolve Green okay. because our YouTube channel is The Evolve Green. Okay, mm -hmm. makes sense. So you've got all of that information there. And we do have the website running across the ticker on the bottom so people can take a quick peek at that as well so that they can go ahead and look you up. Well, Lorena, thank you. I really appreciate you coming on the show with me today here. I It's been such a pleasure. I love learning about this stuff. Well, thank you for having me, Maria. I really, really appreciate it. It's been lovely. Absolutely. Well, wonderful. We'll talk to you again soon sometime here. Great. Thank All you. Right. You're welcome. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.